Here we go. Quick question for you. If you could have one meal right now, what could you have? Now, just to, just picture that meal in your mind. Imagine it in front of you. Mm. Now, imagine I got a bottle of water and I poured the whole thing over it. What are you doing? The whole thing's now ruined. Now, for those of you who don't know us, uh, why not? <laughs> um, uh, my name is Aaron. This is Steve. Steve, say hello. Hello. This is Steve. Uh, and we are uh, running the Bible Applied. Um, which is a channel for people to help them understand how the Bible talks to us today, how it is living and active. We've got to the end of 1 Thessalonians. We are in chapter 5, and this is what it says. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read out to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So three things to finish 1 Thessalonians on. Firstly, do not quench the spirit. Steve, what does that mean? I don't know either. Let's go home. When you get confused about something in the Bible, try to think about its opposite. What's fueling the Holy Spirit? How do you encourage the work of the Holy Spirit? Surely it's using all the tools he's given us, so the Bible, prayer, gifts and abilities, being obedient, growing in love, etc. That is the delicious meal we have in front of us. So what does it mean to quench the Spirit? to stop the Spirit's fire. Fire! fire! Paul here is saying that it's possible to stop the Holy Spirit's work. What does he mean by prophecy? Hmm, Spirit-inspired insight into something. Before we go making stuff up here, we need to check the context. And in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 2, it mentions prophecy about Jesus already having come back. Maybe that was the issue. Either way, we don't despise prophecy. We test it alongside the truth of Scripture. Uh, side note about prophecy though, uh, if you hear someone saying, I just feel God is saying, uh, you need to tread very carefully. The Holy Spirit can affect our feelings. We know that from the Bible. Uh, conviction is an example, but test it because I've heard, I've just have a feeling from God that I've heard that abused before. And you've got to be able to reject stuff if it doesn't line up. Accept it if it's right and it's good and it's an encouragement. Accept it, that's fine. But don't be afraid to say, how do you know that was from God? Don't be afraid to challenge that sort of stuff because the Bible gives us warranty. So don't quench the Spirit. Second, let the Holy Spirit work. If you look at verse uh, 23, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Sanctify just means change to be more like Jesus. Now, a friend of mine built a tree house uh, like no, not like a treehouse, like a proper adult treehouse. It was absolutely amazing. Now imagine me and him built that treehouse together, but instead of uh, helping out, I just sat down scrolling through Instagram. How frustrating! Everything would take twice as long. We wouldn't get to enjoy the treehouse for ages. It would be, ev it, I mean, it would eventually get done. Uh, but we wouldn't enjoy the process. In fact, it would be a pretty exhausting and miserable experience. But imagine that I did help out, that we were partners working together as a brilliant team. We'd get the treehouse done and decorated and we'd enjoy the process and we'd have gotten to know each other so much better through that. That's the same with you and the Spirit. If you are a Christian, you are going to be sanctified. You are going to end up more like Jesus. You can either sit around on Instagram flicking through pictures and watch other people's lives, or you can enjoy the process. You can work with him. You can spot where he's working and work together with him. And then you might be able to manage things that you never thought you'd be able to do. Uh, don't panic when it says about spirit, soul and body. Uh, that just means the whole person, uh, physical, emotional, spiritual, etc. That's He's just making a point, it's hyperbole. God is faithful. He will stick to his promises. He finishes the work that he starts. Awesome. Finally, be a team. 
Remember what we said about the Holy Spirit's work. Just imagine doing what the Holy Spirit wants, but in a team. Yes, that's like me and Steve win. Now that is the church. I was at a youth retreat day once where young people were making lunch packs for the homeless people outside of that church that we were, we were meeting in. And they said that giving out those lunch packs was the highlight of their day. It was amazing, the Holy Spirit at work in a group of teenagers to make them more like Jesus. It was awesome and I witnessed it. Be a team, be church, enjoy it. Application! Following everything you've learned in 1 Thessalonians, the big question from Paul is, are you working with the Holy Spirit? Are you doing things that will help build you into a spiritual titan? Are you going in with other people who have the Holy Spirit too? If, you're, if you are a Christian and you're not part of a group of Christians, then sort it out! Join a Christian youth group. What could you do this week to encourage the work of the Holy Spirit in you? What could you do to enjoy that and enable that? Enable that? Enable that. Now, 1 Thessalonians is an amazing book and it will make you more like Christ, but you need to put it into action. That's down to you. So get it done. Enjoy the application. Application! Just enjoy it. Read through 1 Thessalonians again. It won't take you long. It's only a couple of pages. Um, and we will see you in the next series! Bosh! Bosh! Yes! It's about that I really need a wee. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. No, that's you! Yeah. Another Steve's challenge! Okay, it's time for another Steve's challenge. There's a pile of things here. I'm not going to look at them yet. Solve these dingbats. <laughs> Solve these dingbats. Well, that's easy. Is there no time limit on this? Right, here we go. Okay, three, two, one, go. Who, what, when, where, why? Nowhere, nowhere to hide. Done. Big picture. Standing in line. Pack backwards. Backpack. Often, not, often, not, often. Three, often, two, not, off. More often than not. All, all, world, all around the world. No, no one. No one. No one. Understand. No one understands. Broken hearted. Ovation. Standing ovation. Heat wave. That's time travel, but there's two other words. Travel back in time. N N N N policy. For <laughs> foreign policy. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is it for this series. So if you have uh, not yet gone to the Facebook page and found us, uh, like that page, go onto the group, see the things that people have done for Steve's challenges. Uh, make sure that you look at the other videos that we've done before this um, to be able to apply the Bible to your life. Live it out. Why don't you put on the Facebook groups and stories of how your life has been changed by applying the Bible. Uh, I really look forward to um, seeing you soon. There are ways that you'll be able to support this channel. Uh, so there'll be in the link in the description, there'll be links in the description below for you to be able to do that. Uh, so please do, if you can support this channel, it will just mean that we'll be able to carry on making the things that we're doing here and having some fun along the way. I look forward to seeing you soon. I don't know what our next one is going to be. Maybe if you want to make a suggestion about the next book that we could do in the Bible, then why don't you upload to the Facebook group and uh, make some suggestions there. Uh, my name is Aaron, this is The Bible Applied, and I will see you very soon. <laughs>